runner left at second base by Anson Siebert as he works an impressive first inning. He'll get one more on the mound. It's the, as you said, stuck pretty much with the fastball. That whole inning got only, only walked one, got in one fastball only count, but uh, might have thrown only one or two breaking balls. Probably would like to see a little more of the breaking ball in the second inning, but that fastball is going to be such an effective pitch for him. You're working low 90s now, not much effort. When he powers it down in the zone like that, he gets some nice run on it. So that and he's going to be a guy who can prioritize that fastball. Look at the size of his feet. My goodness, he must have size 15 shoes over there, too. I would imagine height runs in the family. You don't get to 6'8 without the genetics. Might skip a generation or two, but uh, it's in there. Still some shade. As we're still early morning in Marietta, Georgia. Ryan Ashford gets the second inning. Again, a Miami commit, left-hander. Ranked number 228. And the rankings from Perfect Game will be updated in the coming weeks. Dave mentioned that on our first day together on Tuesday. Yeah, with the with the big tournaments not coming up for you know essentially another you know four weeks or so there's going to be that gap in between where where we can re rework the list see what we've learned so far in the early tournaments and this uh national junior showcase and and re-rank them and then go through the big tournaments during the summer the august showcases and then probably do it again in september it's a constantly evolving list jonathan holt starts things off for team red and Holt serves one into the outfield for a base hit. And the second hit allowed by Ryan Ashford. Ball played back in by the right fielder, Caden Lopez. Aggressive first pitch swinging there. <coughs> Blake O'Brien will stand in, the runner at first base. And nobody out here in the red second inning. This one hit into left center field for a base hit. So Holt with the leadoff single. And he's fouled up with a base hit. Off the bat of Blake O'Brien. And I think the approach with Ryan Ashford is to is to attack early. You know, if he if you get a fastball in the first pitch, or maybe the second pitch attack it, because when he gets deeper in a count, he's going to be mixing his pitches, throwing in that cutter and the and the slider going to start working the angles and the edges and these hitters attacking early and getting first pitch fastballs and Dave say this the right way as we see Will Sanford that's about as much as a shift as we've seen we've seen infielders outfielders pretty much play straight up and you see the shortstop Kelly he was shaded up the middle like he is now against O'Brien and O'Brien with a base hit through the left side Holt the lead runner at second base. And Will Sanford from San Diego, California, the Rock Academy at the plate. His travel team, Canes West. Don't see too many shifts at this level, Steve. Although it's not unprecedented. Okay. I've seen it before. I saw, saw a uh, team shift against Blaze Jordan. There you go. In a game when Blaze Jordan was the name, of course, first name yes. guy, Blaze. That's that's all you had to say. And a team shifted against him in a high level tournament a couple years ago, and they had a 90 mile an hour pitcher on the mound, and they put three guys on the left side of the field, and Blaze first pitch lined the ball into right field. Next time, no no shift. <laughs> I would imagine it's got to play for a hit her mentally if they see that at this age. Sanford, young man, coming back from adversity. adversity suffered a fractured elbow at one point. Took a lot of hard work and patience to get back healthier and stronger. Hitter and a pitcher. And you see him where I, I, I'm guessing it might have been the left elbow because he's got well protected on that left elbow up there at the plate.
So if I was if I was to shift with Ashford on the mound, you'd probably shift to the right side of the diamond because he tries to work his pitches on the outside half. You know, that breaking ball, especially to right-handers, trying to backdoor him, trying to sink and run that fastball away from right-handed hitters much of the time. Ashford has given up two singles so far in this inning. Three hits total. Outside pitch pulled on the ground to third base. Puig steps on the bag, fires across. Ashford helps his own cause right there as Puig starts the 5-5-3 double play. And that's an outside breaking ball, and he got Sanford reaching. That's a ball you're probably better off hitting to the opposite field, but Sanford out there in front hits around it, and just a matter of Puig stepping on the base and throwing across. Puig has been really solid in this first, in the nine innings yesterday, and of course already today. Picked up a couple of hits, has been made every play cleanly on defense. Having a nice Plays with high so energy. Far. High energy, young man. Sean Benjamin with a runner at second and two down. Ashford giving up a couple of singles, gets the ground ball and the double play. Trying to work his second straight scoreless inning. This one gets away from the catcher, French. And the runner, O'Brien, now at third base with two down. Ashford takes a moment to reset behind the pitcher's mound. Good nice pitch look, there. Nice location on that pitch. As the count in his favor. We get third base on the run. Throws to first. And Waters could not scoop it out of the dirt on the play. O'Brien scores from third base and Team Red on the board first. And I apologize to Puig. I, I jinxed the young man there by <laughs> calling out his efficiency. That was a hard play in all fairness. A little chopper. And a nice job by Asher. Went in, uh, inside on that pitch, jammed him. Dave, is that a play, though, for a third baseman, and Puig does move around on the field? As a scout, you want to see him make that play. You want to see him at least have the opportunity to see what he can do with a play like that as Jackson Helberg stands in. Oh, you always want to see kids have the opportunity to make that play. And at this level, if you were watching a normal 16-year-old and under tournament game, that play's not going to be made very often. But, you know, at this level, the National Junior Showcase, you know, Puig's ranked 133rd in the country. You want to see him make that play. But, of course, he's made a number of other good plays as well. And in, 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 to add something else, the first baseman, I don't think these first basemen are used to picking on turf. Um, you know, the, the picking on turf is different than picking on grass in that it should be a lot easier. And we've seen very few clean picks at first base today. And I think either with a player who's played on turf more or, uh, uh, you know, just had more experience, you know, age-wise, the first basemen are going to pick pick the ball better than they have been that in the, they have over the last few days. Helberg plays for the Royal Scout team. Dave touched on that yesterday. Sends one in the air to left field. Helton down in the corner is able to make the catch, and that retires Jackson Helberg. A run across here in the inning for Team Red. Against Ryan Ashford, his day is done. And Team Vegas Gold will come to the plate in the bottom of the first inning as we take a look. At Ashford on the mound, and a nice job by Helton getting down into that corner and making the catch. You can see a little more of Ryan Ashford using the formula that, that, that works at all levels. Left-hander, low slot, changes speeds, hits spots. And so when he hit his spots, he was very effective. Conversation ensues over in the Vegas Gold dugout.